y'all doing today? I am going to play on one of my childhood favorites, Commander Keen. Uh, I was going to say this is one of the first games I ever played, but that's not strictly true. I played uh, Goodbye Galaxy, which is the second set of games. Um, but today we're playing the first one, Invasion of the Vorticons. Um... I will I, I will talk plenty as we play, but um before I do start, uh I've made some changes to the Twitch channel here. Um you know the, there's there's more emojis, they're approved now, you should be able to use them, um, even more so if you're a subscriber. And um, if, <laughs> if you use them, they should, like, they should, like, bubble up around me. It's a neat effect. And also there's, like, fun jingles and, and things when, I, when people follow or subscribe, so, you know. See, there you go. There you go. You did the first one. Good job, Eve. Um, <laughs> yes! Um... I also added something called channel points. You should have this little purple button down below at the bottom of the um the chat. And you can you can earn these channel points just by like interacting with the channel and all that and there there'll be like these rewards. I added some. I don't entirely know how this works yet. So you're you're going to have to like we we're, we're going to have to figure this out together as we go. I think you thought you were always wearing those. I thought they were like a subscriber thing. Redeemed hydrate. All right. I've hydrated. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you have any more suggestions for stuff I could add there, I will add them. All right. Commander Keen. Published by Apogee, who are still around. And made by Ed Software. This was their first game. Um, now the thing about this, the one thing you gotta know about this game is uh, there's only PC speaker sound and no music. So I figured this might be kind of a weird quiet stream. So I have prepared some good old, um, you know, royalty free music courtesy of old MIDI files that came with sound cards and windows and stuff. So... You might recognize this little ditty. I even used like a like a sound set that um, is similar to the one used in later Commander Keen, Apogee, Ed games, and all that. So let's like look at the story here. Commander Keen, an invasion of the Vorticons. Billy Blaze, eight-year-old genius working diligently in his backyard clubhouse, has created an interstellar starship from old soup cans, rubber cement, and plastic tubing. As you do. While his folks are out on the town and the babysitter has fallen asleep, Billy travels into his backyard workshop, dons his brother's football helmet, and transforms into Commander Keen and Defender of Earth. In his ship, the bean with bacon mega rocket, Keen dispenses galactic justice with an iron hand. So anyway, uh, aliens from the planet Vorticon 6 are gonna uh, kill Keen because he's smart, I guess, and um... Well, he decides to just go to go to Mars and hang out, as you do. Uh, they steal parts of his spaceship, so he's gonna have to get them back. Namely, a joystick that he took from um, from his brother's video game, a car battery that he took from his mom's car, vacuum cleaner that he took from the kitchen, and Everclear from Dad's liquor cabinet. I think Billy's a claptomaniac. I think there's a chance to that. Hi, Bob. Uh, Rosie running ads now. I think I have pre-rolls on and, like, the weird ones that just pop up on the side of the stream, but, uh, I, I, I don't really... Man, there's so much story here. <laughs> there's Martians. Um, I don't really run ads during the whole thing, though. So, you know, id Software, you might know him from such hits as, um, Rescue Rover. 
Catacomb 3D. Alright, so these are the parts we gotta get. Uh, let me know if like volume and everything is okay, if frame rate's okay, though this game does not run at a particularly good frame rate to begin with, so, you know, there is that. Let me actually just, like, adjust. <laughs> it's like, oh, um, I would like to crop these. Please let me crop it. Okay, there we go. Otherwise, he's got, like, a, like a weird small window here. We can't have that. All right, that ought to fix that. So, you're on the surface of Mars, you can tell because it's red on the floor. It's otherwise pretty gray, but I think that, that like Mars is actually like mostly gray, I read somewhere. And it just looks red because there's rust in the atmosphere. Uh, you gotta collect books from one specific philosopher. Um, he was big on Mars. And these little guys here, um, they can't actually hurt you, but they can push you around, which can be hazardous, depending on their placement, so watch out. Um, we aren't gonna shoot them, because that would be rude. Like, they're just being kind of annoying, but that's all. And, you know, this, this game's got kind of like an old-school design and tally, so there's all these things to pick up, and it's, it's really just for score. But I don't mind, because it's fun. It's also the classic thing of, like, picking up, like, tasty food, which is on Mars for some reason. You got these little, like, cave levels. Um... This one doesn't really do anything. You don't even have to do it, but you got this... Telepathic statue at the... Sta statue? Statue at the top. You hear in your mind, it is too bad that you cannot read the standard galactic alphabet, human. Ooh, fancy. Standard galactic alphabet. Alright. I don't seem to have that button mapped on my controller for some reason. Um, let's not go there yet. I have a specific place I want to go. I want to go to this little cave. And get something very important. The pogo stick. This lets you jump way higher. can go to this little secret. Now these guys, these do kill you, so you want to shoot them when you see them. It's kind of interesting that the, um, the enemies actually leave bodies. That was, I believe, an intentional design choice by Tom Hall. Because um, you wanted, you wanted kids to know that there's consequences for violence, so... Enemies leave bodies. Um, they don't in the sequel, because I guess parents got upset by it, so instead, you know, his, his gun just, like, stuns enemies, and they're just like, oh, man, and they've got cartoon stars. That thing nearly killed me. Those are called Yorps, by the way. I think they're Yorps, at least. They might be something else. Lots of lollipops here. I wonder what they are, they're made of. I don't know what ingredients they have on Mars, so... What do you mean I'm back? I was never gone, and no one will be any the wiser about this. I 
All right, this guy's this, this is a this is a Vorticon. He's a jerk. He, t he takes a lot of hits, so he can be annoying to deal with, especially when he just decides to kind of follow you around. Uh, hopefully that's not going to be an issue, but he's just going to hang. He's just going to be hanging around now, so he could totally get in the way and be really annoying. Look at him over there. Oh shoot! I thought there was a key card there. This is of course the beginning of key cards, so. All that crap and doom that came from here. It's probably the work of John Romero. Or Tom Hall. It's probably Tom Hall, because he's all about that hiding stuff. Crap. See also Rise of the Triad. Alright. Um can we jump across here or Okay, yes we can. Now, we can go to the exit, where normally you would fight that Vorticon, but since he decided to just go on his union mandated break, we don't gotta worry about him. And we got the first part for our ship. Yeah, that's the car battery. You can jump on Yorps to stun them for a bit, but, um, I'm pretty sure it's the only enemy you can do that with. Other things will kill you or just generally be impervious, like little robots. These signs, by the way, that's the standard galactic alphabet that that statue is talking about. Um, you may recognize this as the enchantment alphabet from Minecraft. It's, it's taken from here. This is where it came from. Oh, shoot! I didn't mean to do that! No! Oh man! Oh, he's so sad because he's dead. More ads? There, there shouldn't be ads happening. Is anyone else getting ads or is that just Bob? back to a previous save. I haven't saved at all, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm actually like, um... How do you save? I'm actually not sure how to save in this. I'll have to look that up later. Oh, okay, yeah. Pre-rolls will happen from reopening Twitch, unless I, like, manually play ads, but... Um... They shouldn't otherwise happen while you're watching. If that does happen, let me know, and I'll try to fix that. Um... And, you know, generally, like, give me feedback on whether, like, my ad settings are annoying or anything like that. I don't like having ads get intrusive. The message echoes in your head. The teleport in the ice will send you to the dark side of Mars. I believe that's referring to a secret level that we can get to later. Let's 
So, annoying uh, technical crap aside, how's everyone doing? How is the stream experience? Are you enjoying your rosies? episodes look pretty easy generally, so I can, for the most part, just kind of blunder around if I don't remember the layout of something. Pretty sure we have to find some way to get over there. Okay, there's the exit. So I guess I don't need to worry then. Oh, okay. I guess it was just talking about that teleporter. There is a secret level though. Confusing Commander Keen's football helmet for clown hair. That's unfortunate. Alright, we fortunately don't have ice physics here. I think there's like special. I think on the ice blocks up here, you will get like slidey, slidey shit. There you go. But like. It kind of just looks like he keeps walking, like, basically his momentum just gets a lot bigger. But he's sliding, trust me. Hi, Arlena! I think if we've played one of the King games, but don't know which, that's a while ago now. Um, it's most likely either this or Episode 4, which is the first part of Goodbye Galaxy, because those were the free ones. Can you get out of here, please? Okay, so you can't even shoot robots, which causes situations like this. I'm sure there's gonna be something cool up here. Somewhere. Whoa! He pushed me through. That was weird. Ah, yes, key card up there. I wonder if that robot can be shot. And it cannot. That complicates things. Hmm. So maybe we're supposed to jump through all those blue things. Or I can just, you know, whoop whoop my way through here. Now, here you just slide, you just keep on sliding. As you do. Another Vorticon I fight. And this time, it's gonna be even more annoying, because of the weird ice physics. Ugh, okay, that was close. Because, like, you don't have a health bar, so if he hits you, if anything hits you, you just die. If there's any like weird background hiss or anything like that, because um, the volume meter thanks a lot, robot. The volume meter is looking a little weird on my end, but I don't know if that's anything that's actually audible or not. What a, what a cool little robot friend. I'm, I'm glad they did that for me. Oh shit! Yeah, they go- they go fast when they see ya. Alright, there we go. Dodge that guy. Come up here. That. And now, hopefully, yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> That could have easily been bad, but I got lucky. Oh, 
I'm like really wary of any other weird technical crap happening, because last time I tried streaming this game it was an absolute technical disaster, and then this time it opens up with things being crap and not good, and now I'm just like, oh god, I'm gonna like end the stream later and then find out that the whole thing is ruined somehow. See these words in your head, you will need a ray gun in the end, but not to shoot the Vorticon! It's, uh, Tom Hall's, like, violence isn't the answer thing at work again. Which is, you know, it's very funny when you look at, like, how he did a whole lot of Wolfenstein. So it's like, violence isn't the answer, except when it's Nazis! You know, uh, it, it could also just be that, you know, the whole non-violence thing only applies when it's a game aimed at kids, which Wolfenstein is not. I'm just rated 13 for profound carnage. Is that a con philosophy book? Yeah, they're all over. They're all over here. Look, there's like three up there. That guy's a big fan. mine now, though. There's a hidden city. Look in a dark area of the city to the south. Okay, that's talking about the secret level. levels, like, aren't required, like, only ones that, like, block the way or that have one of the, um, parts you need, you actually gotta do. And I guess the pogo stick level, because you'll probably... I actually don't know if the game's possible without the pogo stick. I've never tried it. You were obviously intended to get that, though. Oh, this looks different. You're here in your mind. Garg! Alright, very enlightening. Like, I like this game's philosophy where it's basically just like, okay, getting to play more game is its own reward. It's like, well, you don't have to play these levels, but why wouldn't you? And, you know, there's a secret level that you don't really have to go there. I guess maybe if you collect a whole lot of score, you'll, like, you know, get extra lives or whatever, but it's not like this game's really hard, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, please, please let me go. I don't think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was me getting an extra life just now. <laughs> There's no HUD, though, so, you haven't figured that part out yet. You don't really need extra lives, is what I'm trying to say. Well, uh, you know... This was a lot harder when I was a kid, so maybe I would've needed them back then. Because of course here the non-violent solution is to get these warps to get the hell out of your way. Which can be difficult. You know, otherwise you're just gonna do this. Uh, that works too. I guess that's a little violent, but... They're also, uh, res they're also fireproof, I guess. I'm gonna say fire-resistant, but, like, look at him! He's having a time of his life in an inferno! A Europish whisper says, look for dark hidden bricks. Ah, yes, we used that earlier. When I went into that little hidden path in the Pogo cave. Um, so maybe this is the hidden city they were talking about? Or maybe it's further below? I always forget where the secret level is in this. Now, this particular level is a maze. We're just gonna have to go around and find key cards and all that. Okay, 
So if you get below there, I think that's where you can get the secret level. Anyone else grow up with these old DOS games? I'd love to stream quite a few of them, but I'm trying not to, like, oversaturate, you know, like, not do everything at once. Because, you know, I, I, I would like to still have, like, nostalgic material like this for streaming, like, some years from now. murdering people for, for cola, which, you know, I probably would do that in real life. Wait, being allowed to game, first ones are real play, we're a little later. Um, it's always interesting hearing about, like, people whose oh, I didn't mean to use that. People whose parents wouldn't let them play video games, because, like, I- Whoa, he's coming after me! <laughs> I was playing video games for, like, almost as long as I can remember. Like, I was, like, two years old or something. My parents were pretty chill, so... Okay, please. If you're gonna be weird, I need you to stay away from me. I kind of love that the enemies in this game will just... just jump all over the place. Like, they don't care about staying in their little zones. I wonder if these are supposed to be just like their little houses. Because <laughs> it's not like this is like part of like the intended level trajectory. Uh, Touch Keen and some other games. First one I really played was Age of Empires. I love Age of Empires 1. The music in that is so nostalgic to me, and just like all the like little voice clips that your little guys make. They're just like open. <laughs> wanted to shield you from the idea that violence existed. Uh, I guess that's a way to go about it. Um, I think my parents saw a lot of things as just like teachable moments, so like, I think the only times I wasn't allowed to like watch or play something if is if my mom was just personally just like, uh. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to watch Power Rangers, but I was allowed to watch way more violent things than Power Rangers, so, you know. I'm gonna need more key cards. I haven't come across any key cards in forever. <laughs> Nor the secret level exit. says there are some games my mom said no to for various reasons, but a lot of those my dad would still sneakily let me watch him play after she'd gone to bed. I think you told me that, like, Duke 3D was one such game. If I'm not mistaken. Maybe I really should go out of my way to, like, collect everything and, like, kill enemies so that, like, I can be more sure of where I've been in this freaking maze. Oh, that maybe just kind of ended. Oh, no, wait, there it is. going on over, over to the left that I haven't been to. Don't know how to get there. Whoa, God! That was scary. Red key card, though. Alright. 
I'm gonna have to figure out how to get to that path over there. The left. Yeah, honestly, like, a lot of the, the shoot games I did not play, um, some of which were probably, you know, because I wouldn't have been allowed to, but it was also just, like, less of a, of a thing I just came in contact with. So I mostly just played whatever, like, my brother had, and... I know that he probably played, like, Doom and stuff at, like, friends' houses, but maybe he was just like, eh, let's not push my luck when it came to installing that at home. Getting on the cola. Getting on the cola. Yes, I know that's almost assuredly Pepsi, but I don't give a shit. I would not murder for Pepsi, I, I would probably murder for Diet Coke, though, so... Alright, so this would be where the secret level is. And then, we'll go over here... Risky part. Uh, I think there's something fiendish with regards to, like, not dying down here, if you want to... Yeah, that, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. I knew it was something like that. that there was gonna be a flame down there. I guess we don't need all those key cards if we're gonna try to get the secret level, so... I'm gonna find my way back down to that path in a timely fashion. And that could be good. Core memory. I guess it kind of is like that, yeah. I've actually been. I, I bought the Dreamcast version of Rayman 2. I brought this up on, on another recent stream, but. I bought the Dreamcast version, and that's the one I'm gonna play, probably, but. I'm gonna need. Like, better video cable or something for the Dreamcast. Because it looks like crap right now. But that's gonna be something that, like, screws with my core memories. Because Rayman 2 is one of my favorite games, and... I know many parts of that game inside out, but... Um... Every version... Every version slightly different. This is something they love doing with Rayman games for some reason. There's gonna be a bunch of stuff that's, like, slightly different, but I think that'll make it just even more fun to stream. Oh boy, Rosie's... Rosie's... unsense of direction is gonna... gonna happen right here. for a really long time, I, I might grab a map, but like, this game's not very long, this episode is not very long, so... Whoa, that's one of those things about the shareware model, it's like, sometimes it's unclear if you should consider each part like its own game, or just like one episode of the same game. The jazz is just going crazy. Carrying you into the 
other fire. Probably should have gone to the left there, but... This freaking MIDI jazz band is just... not super appropriate for this tense moment in the video game that I am playing. It's the waters of Mars. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to go up here or, or what. I mean, this just kind of seems like it's looping back into the level. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I, what I did wrong there. Maybe I'm supposed to somehow go to the right. Now I've got to get all the way back there. Um, I can give it a shot. I don't think they're related to getting into the secret level, though. Okay, I found my way back a little more quickly this time. Let me out, please! Let me out! Oh god! Alright, that worked. There we go! Secret level. Okay, I'm gonna have to shoot you because you're you're gonna lead to my death. All of you are just trouble. Like, you might not murder me, but it would be legally manslaughter, I think. So I think this mostly just exists for like, yay! See, you found the secret. And there's, a, there's a whole bunch of... There's a whole bunch of lollipops around here. What? <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> that really scared me. I guess you can go up here to get around these guys. You know, if, if you're gonna do this shit, then you might still be in. Oh god. All right. that your life counter is referred to as how many keens you have left, that kind of implies that these are all like clones. Okay, 
kind of just, I'm kind of just vibing with the MIDI jazz. Kind of just vibing. Clones fueled by lollipops, Pepsi, and pizza. I'd say they're living the dream. Keen dream. Actually, kind of concentrating on where the hell I'm going now, because uh, I don't want to. I don't want to die again. Not in the secret level. That would be embarrassing. Uh, I think the exit's just over here. Yeah. Yeah. Maximum teddy bear. We all know what's gonna happen here, right? What a dastardly trick. At least I have pets. Alright, we're gonna have to do some fun keycard things. We need blue to get red. What do we do to get blue? to get green. Kill the Vorticon commander directly. Thank <laughs> you. 
somewhere over there we probably need. Just don't know how to get up there. <laughs> the shape of those platforms. Maybe that's not as hard as I thought it would be. Up there. There we go. That, this is freaking Pepsi. It's just freaking Pepsi. bears. All of, the, all of these, these boards have teddy bears. And their little houses. What? Second pogo stick? Now that's weird. I've never seen that before. this way. Didn't need those hidden blocks anyway. Goodness gracious. Imagine if I got all the way over here without that key card. And that's how we non violently beat the Vorticon Commander. Commander Keen returns to the Bean with Bacon Mega Rocket and quickly replaces the missing parts. He must get home before his parents do. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just, just a, just a little, um, just a little excursion to Mars. All your parents are out. What's that? We stayed over there. It's, uh, it's a big boy ship. What? Keen makes it home and rushes to beat his parents upstairs. Let's see if little Billy's asleep. What's this one-eyed green thing in your room? Ah, oh, Mom, can I keep him? Well, we'll talk about that in the morning, son. You get some rest. Oh, that was his mom. <laughs> I gave Mom a dad voice.
And he does, in fact, keep a Yorp as a pet. There's no sleep for Commander Keen! The Vorticon mothership looms above, ready to destroy Earth! It's a good thing he happened to go to Mars. To be continued. You must find your way onto the Vorticon mothership and destroy all the horrible Tantalus rays. If you don't, the Earth explodes! Don't miss episode 2! Send money to- don't actually send money, they're not there anymore. <laughs> they're, they're elsewhere now. Yeah! Rosie. So that's episode one of Commander Keen. Um, I'm actually feeling a little queasy, otherwise I would go into episode two right now, so uh, I hope you don't mind a uh, short stream tonight. Um, I'll probably make up for this sometime next week. Maybe we'll do a little something extra. So, we'll be back on Sunday with Final Fantasy 16. I'm gonna play more Commander Keen soon. Yeah. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. I love you all. Don't forget to tell all your friends about Rosie. Uh, follow me on these things down here. Rosie rolling out! Bye-bye! And now I'm gonna have to edit all that shit. <laughs> Good luck.